Dr. John Yu is an assistant professor at the University of Georgia. He received his PhD in environmental toxicology from the Nagoya University School of Medicine and his postdoctoral fellowship at the National Institute of Industrial Health in Japan. He was the assistant professor at the University of Washington. Dr. Yu's lab examines the link between environmental exposures to heavy metals and solvents and human diseases at macro and micro levels with an emphasis on reproduction and neurotoxicity. He has written several papers on toxicology and has received several awards for his work in this area. Dr. Yu's research has led to the advancement of both the National Toxicology Program and the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Please join me in welcoming Dr. John Yu. Hello. Anyone can hear me? Okay. So, first I would like to thank Dr. Carl for inviting me to talk to about our recent studies on um, Amagon epidemiological studies and thank Michaela for the wonderful introduction. And uh, Amagon is a very odd topic and I hope my today's topic will give you some new insight of these issues. So I would like to start this presentation using citation from Dr. Okay, I have to do the disclaim, AGD disclaim. I do not have any financial interest of products in my talk with any companies offering grant money from this continued dental or medical education program. I don't have any, okay. So I would like to start presentation using citation from Dr. Slava King, the mouth is the gateway to the rest of your body, a mirror of our overall well-being. And in Japanese, it's called Okuchiwa Kenko no Iriguchi. And in Chinese, said said Chong Kao Ro. So we cannot have a healthy body without healthy oral. So that's very important. So this research involves a lot of people, and I would like to thank Dr. Ying, Dr. Simon Lin, and Dr. Song, and Kevin, for their passion, for their hard work. Without their passion, I don't think I can stand here to talk about our research. So Dr. Lin is my son Zach's dentist, so who actually gave me the inspiration, uh, inspired me to start this research. And uh, so we are talking about what, you know, his vision inspired me during the talk. So you may already have read or heard some highlighted news last year. So it is first introduced in the UJ today, talk about our recent research finding what the relationship between dental feeling and body mercury ever. So, you know, some of the news media using some very eye-catching, you know, title, and they also using eight dental feeling may contribute to the body mercury. So today, so some people may be upset with their title, and I received a lot of email request me, Dr. Yu, can you ask them to correct some contents or title, because some contents may be misleading. So today I think I will give you more background information to talk about this research. So as a, what, what happened? So as a toxicologist, I have spent years trying to, oh, wow, what happened? <laughs> so as a toxicologist, I have spent years trying understanding the molecular mechanism 
of heavy metal. Try to understand what is causing oxidative stress, causing cell cycle change, why they related to neural development toxicity. Then, what is my motivation? Try to start this epidemiological studies. So it's so I would like to speak. It's not like a research today. I would like to speak, you know, as a parent of a four years old boy. So I had really want to share my struggling pace, try to deal with you know the treatment option because my son back that time have multiple 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 cavity. So this is really you know personal struggle. And uh, my son at that time, age four, had, is a very healthy, smart boy. And we sent him to daycare. So daycare teacher used uh, candy as a reward to encourage potty training. So that's one kind of my son smart. He liked candy. He went to bathroom a lot of time then he got a lot of candy. Then, of course, he get a reward from multiple cavity. We tried so hard to avoid, but as shown here, he had a lot of, you know, needed to fix. So, of course, as a toxicologist, we are really concerned about a lot of potential impact, you know, with dental materials. So we visit several dentist clinics because they give you different options amalgam with anesthesia composite with anesthesia or even other options we really frustrated we confused so dental filling have you know amalgam amalgam have 50 percent mercury Composite resin, BPA, reported to have endocrine disrupt. So, what is our choice? So, I just, you know, do we want using mercury? Do we want using BPA? So, nowadays, it's very easy for you can Google search to get more information about what the potential risk. So of course, the most important thing I put, you know, look at the white paper from FDA to see what is, you know, published 2009, what is their opinion, what is their conclusion regarding dental amalgam or BPA. So I want to read, this is very conclusive, you know, uh, their conclusion that Many study on the safety amalgam feelings has been done. A lot of study have been done. FDA have reviewed the best available scientific evidence to determine whether the low level of mercury web associated with dental amalgam feelings are a cause of concern. It found no reason to limit use of amalgam. So that's their conclusion. And also they said there is no clear evidence to data to support the mercury exposure from amalgam. Do they have amalgam exposure? So based on the evidence, FDA can see dental amalgam filings, feelings, save for adults and the children age six and above. So my son, that at a time, age of four. So of course, amalgam out of table, out of consideration. So then what to do? So this is really nice, you know, paragraph listed in FDA. So they said what should know before getting a dental amalgam feeling. So they listed both benefit and the potential risk. So when we make a decision or policy, one important things we have to make, have to balance benefit, cost. 
So in this case, the FDA list why need to use in dental amalgam? Because amalgam strong, long lasting, and they less likely to break than other type of materials. Dental amalgam is the least expensive type of filling material. Potential risk. Low level mercury released from amalgam may have potential risk. So that's kind of, so I read this, you know, so with the advance of new material, do they still amalgam constitute as a strong, long-lasting as a benefit because we have other material available? And also with the economy right now, do we think other material still too expensive to have as compare the benefit and the potential risk. Because so far, all so many studies have not confirmed really it is safe to use amalgam. And so this is more important things in the final in the FDA said, deciding what feeling material to use to treat dental decay is a choice that must be made by you and your dentist. So I have a question. You are a lot of dentist clinic. How many times have you talked with your patients to discuss with the use of the material? So in the case we visited six clinics, only two clinics actually discussed with us what material to use to treat Jack's cavity. So risk assessment, risk management is a systematic science. In order to make such a policy decision, we have to look at all the components of you know, risk components. As shown here, in a hazard identification, very important two components we have to deal with. Does dose response assessment. And the second one is exposed assessment. They are connected. We know mercury inherent, very toxic at certain level. And then the other important things, how much? For example, how many people in a population can be exposed, have extra risk in the case of amalgam. How many people? What is the percentage? What is the extra risk we can have? So why we concern about mercury in amalgam? Of course, first things we have to concede mercury can expose from different sources. The total amount of mercury in your body is matter. We have to think, we cannot isolate because fish workplace exposure. Isolate those resources from amalgam because in the final, is the total amount is mercury in your body a matter. So this is very important. And also in the past, Amalgam, you know, will thought to be inert. Once they put in your teeth, they never released. And the recent years, that is not true. And a lot of case depends on your teeth grinding or other circumstances. They still a very small amount of mercury can be released. Then, as FDA recognized, those small amount very small, then how much? No one know. And also it is widely argued because the amount of mercury exposed from dental filling is very, very low. It's less than the people who are eating fish or other resources. Then it is said safe 
Do you think that's a rational argument? For example, when we're talking about among dental feeling, it's always how many, how many dental feeling you have. We have to quantitative look at. And uh, so this, we already know the total amount mercury in your body has been verified both in vivo, animal, human epidemiological study. And they correlated. They have already know exposed mercury could lead to adverse effect. And then workplace, seafood, of course, there are two sources can lead into. Then how about dental amalgam? Adding, for example, for me as Asian people, we had already, I eat a lot of seafood, so I already had a high level of mercury. Then adding dental amalgam, if I have eight, six more mercury, then what is going to happen? That meaning we have to concede the total amount of mercury in your body. So a lot of we, as FDA said, we have done a lot of study, try to understand, examine the relationship between dental amalgam and adverse effect. However, all those studies try to single out the association dental feeling with adverse effect and never control the workplace, seafood, other resources. Therefore, the results, you have not control those founding, confounding factor. Therefore, your results always inconsistent because the other bias have not been controlled. Then the question, how much dental amalgam contribute to your body mercury? Do we have any science-based evidence? I searched, I tried to answer. Is it matter if I give, you know, because very low level, is it safe to give Jack six, eight, ten dental filling at age four? So the risk, as I said, we know mercury is very toxic. However, the risk to the population is determined also by exposure. If amalgam exposure do not change, the hypothesis or the argument that amalgam does not, you know, give you extra expose to your body mercury, then the population with no dental feeling should be equal to the people with different type of dental feeling. So that will be these two population will be same. Is that true? So I try to answer this question more easily because a lot of argument because FDA such reviewed. They said uh, dental feeling no because the amount too low, they will not impact your total body mercury. So this is a million dollars questions. You cannot use a single R1 to finish because in order to confirm this hypothesis, you needed to have random sample population across the United States. And you needed to do oral examination to collect all the information of your dental feeling, how many, what kind of material. And also you need to measure how much, what is the mercury river, what is the species. So this will be very hard to conduct this result, research. Then I thinking, is there any way that can I found a data existing research across the United States and use that data to look at, to test this hypothesis? And here is a National Health and Nutrition Survey. Is Hello? And it has been conducted on a period basis since 1971. And every year they conduct about 5,000 interview, interview. And they all did risk fact, select a specific disease for target for the research. 
And all the sample, they have a stratified multi-stage sample design to try to refer the U.S. population. And there is a full component in the survey. It's very costly, very expensive studies, and including medical examination, including dental examination, they all have physical measurements. And lastly, they have laboratory tests that every year depend on their focus. They measure about more than 100, 200 compounds in your body. I think this will be a fool. I can extract information from this enhanced data and help answer these questions. That will be very expensive, uh, effective to help me. And uh, so look at what the enhance have done. So enhance have found that have high level of blood lead level across the United States, and then they are finding, finally leading to all gathering cannot to adding lead into the gathering. That's one achievement. And then they are finding that have low fluid level in the population, especially for the pregnant woman. And then they have mandatory to adding food, you know, fortification. And right now they find a rising level of obesity. That's why they have, you know, public health action plan try to fight against obesity. And also, recent they found racial ethnic disparities in hepatitis B. Then they have generated new policy, try to universal vaccination for all infants. So this very useful data. And then we dig into there are so many years data, and then we try to find which year data that we can have complete oral examination, complete laboratory test, and then only we found 2003, 2004, and 2011, 2012. They can get all essential data, and we can look at the association from the U.S. representative population. And here we did, you know, of course, we download all these data sets from the CDC website. And we, of course, we can conduct field data and check the quality of the data. And also we field the, the orbit subjects with less than three years old because they are just having teeth. Not, and also none of them have any, you know, cavity in that age. So we also filled up those data. And of course, we extracted all the information we needed. And this is one of the example in the oral examination. They have manual, 235 pages manual to describe how the study conducted, how to record the teeth count, the road cavities, all the information. They have standard to conduct oral health examination. And here is just the examining or example show how they record every teeth count. So every tooth they have count five three surface or five surface to check if they have a dental surface restoration. And one thing, because in 2003, 2004, the majority of dental filling material is amalgam. So therefore, they didn't distinguish what is real dental service using composite or amalgam. They just recalled dental service filling. So that's kind of limitation in two period, this two period. And then we starting convert data. We transform all those mercury level data into log transform because they are not a normal distribution. And to meet the statistic uh, requirement, we transform data into log transformed. And also we try to divide it 
into the subjects into three categories. One group with no dental service feeling, and one group we separated at eight. So why we select eight? So that's the question. A lot of, you know, when the media reported, they asked me, Dr. Yu, why you select eight? So there is two consideration because the eight, we try to have three balanced group. And also we try to, we actually tried five, eight, 10, 12, and found this eight number is most, you know, likely, you know, separated the group into three balanced group. And also I like the number of eight. And finally we decided, let's select the eight. And that's where, you know, comes from the eight, of course. And we did try to, as I said, the enhanced data is very high quality. They have a lot of fact considering, have control, confounding factor, as I said, we have age, we have race, ethnic information, we have education, gender, smoking, fish, and all those factors we can put into, you know, multi-parameter analysis, try to get the data. So here is the distribution of dental and service fearing, how that distribute across the and we can see the average mean medium across the whole population is around three. And you look at about 2.5 people have more than 31 dental feeling in 2003 data. And also look at, so this is, you know, the median groups, and this is the high groups. You can, we separate into three groups, and then here show about 41% subjects don't have dental feeding. And we found the group one to eight, about 30%, one to eight. And then have more than eight dental feelings. And then look at, uh, this is the 2011, 12. What's difference? Any, any difference up 10 years? Yes, there are difference. We still see the median number of dental cell feelings around three. And we still see about 2.5 people subjects have more than 28 dental semi. That's a significant number. And then we see some changes. Look at uh, this, you know, figure. Compare the percentage to have not have dental feelings changed here. So the number here have less people have dental feeling compared to 2012. There can be affordable, more people access to have cavity treated, or more people develop, you know, have more cavity. Then is there any, any impact on the mercury level compared to three groups? So this is the distribution. So when we publish paper, we're always using medium, average level. But in, look, in reality, look at the distribution, the level. This is the mercury, the percentage here, and then this is the level of mercury. You can see there are wide range of mercury. This is the blood mercury. So there is also a number of people don't have mercury. And also some people have very high mercury in the control group. Then what happened? to the people with one to eight dental feeling. So, any difference? Yes. The average across the whole population, this is not a small number across 2,000, more than 2,000 people. And you can see the average change from 0 0.4 to 6.9. And then the distribution, the, a lot of people shifted, have more higher level of mercury. So this obviously very clearly demonstrate that 
amalgam. Oh, these times we didn't either, you know, say any different amalgam or dendrophilic material. They actually shifting the distribution of the you know, mercury level. Then how about more than eight? Is significant? You I tell you. So you can see the level from 1.17. Look at the average, it's already in double body, mercury body level. And look at distribution. A lot of more people are crowded in a high level of mercury. That's very significant. And look at two more recent year. Because in a dental filling material, they are shifting some percentage of you know amalgam decrease. Therefore, let's look at 2011, 12. What's the difference? And we can see the same thing. The average total mercury didn't change, but however, look at one to eight, they still shifting the population. Have more higher blood level mercury than in the eight category. We see still have about double average, and you can a lot of population have more mercury in the body. And compared to the previous years in the high group, we see some decrease from 1.17 to 0 0.99. Why? That means there's maybe some effect from switching using composite material. That's the overall in the high group, they are decreasing. And also, we here show some results from inorganic mercury. And this is obvious to show higher group, the population have more, you know, have a higher blood inorganic mercury. And the same thing, look at uh, 2011, 12, similarly, the level of inorganic mercury increasing compared to the patient without dental feeling. And then we look at the further, because we know the ethnic race group can have very significant difference, you know, the population ethnic groups have different level of mercury. And then we can see in the control, the blue, the level in the subject without dental feeling. And we can see with dental feeling, those depends on the number of amalgam. The level increased. The level increased no matter what kind of race. And then look at 2011. And here, in 2011, we have more because before, we not have a separate category for Asian population. And we here can see, we can see the population, the Asian population here, have very higher base mercury river. The reason, we don't know why, the hypothesis, Asian population eat more fish. Now, I don't know, some studies show, but not really true. So we still try, you know, there is our one group, they are trying in Chicago, they try to identify why the Asian population have base high line of mercury. And no matter what level you are, with dental feeling, one to eight, more than eight, you have clearly those dependent increase in your body mercury. So the argument that mercury from amalgam release not constitute a significant source. That is not true. And yeah, that's amalgam. And then we look at the age. So there's also changes in the age, the mercury river from the control. We can see, you know, with the age, the mercury level in the blue river, they increase. However, until the age of 60, their body mercury level will no longer increase. And then look at with dental feeling. 
they have a dose clear, you know, dependent increase in your body's mercury. Again, we correct the, the AD effect, and we still see the impact of a release of mercury from the dental feeding. And here, the more clearly visualized what the huge data point show. Clearly, this is the, is the age, and this is the body level of mercury, and you can see in the control, they increase with your age, and around the 60 get flat, and old age, they go into decrease. This is the population without dental feeding. And look at with one, two, eight dental surface feeling. They have clearly separated, very clearly separate from that the people without dental feeling. And look at the more higher group, more than eight. They have more higher body level of mercury. And look at the inorganic. So the group with eight, they have more clear, but in with one to eight, we don't have very, you know, great separation from the control group. And this is from the year 11, 12, they show with the age, the same show same the trend with the increase, no matter what age group, the dental feeling will increase in the body level. And then look at the same thing using the, the plot, showing that you know, this is total mercury, and this is the most mercury. So you can see even most mercury dental feeling group has more higher most mercury. That's bothered me because you released dental amalgam released from your teeth should be mercury. Why most mercury? Yes, because our body, oral bacteria, as Dr. Summer did research, found they are involved, microbiome. They are involved conversion. They actually, not only in your mouth, but in your intestine, they can convert mercury to most mercury. That is actually, you know, that's why you have a high mercury the bacteria, they can constantly change the form in your body. That's why your most mercury also increased. And then one argument is that fishing, because one argument, mercury released from amalgam is less than fish consumption. Therefore, the impact of mercury from amalgam can be neglected. And look at, we separated into fish, the subjects with fishing eating, with the other group without fish eating. And with that correction, we still, you know, in the, with fishing, we still see one to eight group, more than eight group, there's significant increase. This have more meaning because for example, I eat a lot of fish, and I all, the body level mercury is already reached to the toxic level. And then you went to dentist, and then to give me more aid service feeling, what is going to be? The total amount in your body matter. And you're going to have, although the total amount amalgam itself, is not a, a problem, but adding with fishing, for example, high education in my lab, I using mercury, extract protein, have more higher base level. What happened? So we did uh, using generalized linear recreation model, try to compare what, you know, compare different kind of factors, education, ethnic group, and all, you know, smoking, try to identify which is the much significant fact in contribute to the broader total mercury. As shown here, you can see clearly dental feeling, 
the number of dental filling significantly compared to the other fact, education fact in 2003 years, we found that this is the most significant fact. And then we look at the most recent years, they have fishing eating data and compare different kind of factor. And I can show here, of course, this aging population show very same significant fat contribute to the total body mercury. And then you can see here, dental surface much higher than the contribution fish. Here is the fish. This is normalized compare how important those factors contribute to the body mercury level. So we right now we talk about exposure level. Then how about those level related to adverse effect? And we use the EPA. They have referenced those number of every day, how much you can take. They have a standard. And this standard convert into blood mercury rate is 8.5.8 microgram per liter. Then I want to know using this reference dose to compare to the population, how many people, what the percentage have impact. And see, in the control, we still have 1.25 percentage of subjects have the mercury level over 5.8. So it's understandable in the population, expose a lot of the sea, a workplace exposure. With one to eight dental service feeling, you found the number increased. They increased 2.13. That's the extra exposure, extra risk from AMAGA. And then look at number more than eight. You can have 4.21% of the subject have about double, two times higher risk to have your blood mercury over the EPS standard. And look at this 2011. They show similar results in the control. They have 2.27 over that standard. And you have 3.3 in the 1 to 8 dental service feeling. And then you can find a 4.6. Huge jump. Amalgam. Actually, dental service feeling. They actually contribute a lot to the body mercury. And we did a risk calculation using all the ratio. All the ratio is used in epidemiological studies. We used to compare two groups, which one to understand what the contribution of the factor. And here we compared three level, dental service without dental service, with one to eight and eight to see what is the relative risk to have your blood level more than EPA standard. And as show here, compare without, with one to eight, you have 1.48. So that means over one means you have over risk. And then compare one to two more than eight group, you can find the two more than two times higher. That's a huge risk. And as compared to the risk you know, in smoking, you compare smoking without smoking, two groups have lung cancer. They all have some similar, you know, relative, you know, OR ratio. And then after we did examination on the mercury level, then, how about the BPA? So, this I just show. You can see with the, in 2003, in the young kids, they have this age, you have really higher BPA, 
within the age, they decrease. And you examine the relationship between three groups, you didn't see any difference. So that means in a long term after dental filling when composite, they didn't change the total the population distribution. And then with the most recent 2012, 11, 12, you can see because the awareness use of BPA, the total amount, especially in the young kids, they draw significantly. And the same thing, compared to the different group line, they are no difference between dental service. That means once you install the you know, composite material, they are actually didn't impact your body total level. Maybe a short surge after surgery, but after that, they didn't change your body level. So you don't need to worry about. In that case, if my son that time, maybe I will choose BPA. But so I, you know, didn't. And after, you know, of course, the publication and the American Dental Association, they also contact me and regarding some detailed information. They also released, introduced their results. And then in a very objective, this is from the one department. And I talked to the Dr. Lip from ADA and they recognize, you know, our new understanding. And then also she sent me the most recent the usage the information about how much percentage of dentists still using Amagon. And of course, significant drop. This is the ratio, and this is the, this is a starting from 0 0.6. And you can see starting from 80, they drop 2014, they about 60, 60% 60 still using Amagon, although they are significant draw. This is a really reliable based on insurance clearance. So insurance data, how much, you know, when they compile from the insurance company, Trovens, and they from, they have the data from 2005, 2014. So this is very reliable. So, and then the most, you know, American Dental Association also released a, another statement and they said they cited our paper. However, when of bothering the sentence here, they said our study over estimate the risk because as I said, in the dental filling material, we didn't exclude composite because that time didn't identify. So in fact, the amalgam, we should exclude the more control from the dental group. We put in the composite into as a amalgam group. That is dilution effect, anyone you can understand. However, ADS said, we actually overestimate this kind of reversed. So I emailed Dr. Lip and she said, oh, I don't know how they interpret this, you know, overestimation. So it's kind of, so we have so far understanding dental amalgam feeling, of course, significant shift the level of blood level in the U.S. population. So the second question we need to answer, does the level of mercury elevated by amalgam induce adverse effect in U.S. population? So we need to look at adverse effect. As said, the enhanced data have medical examination, has all kind of laboratory examination. So we actually can have that data to examine their association with clinical symptom. And also from 2015-16, the enhanced data actually gave the information. They changed the manual oral examination. 
they added one category to show the teeth, what kind of material used in dental filling. That will answer, you know, clearly composite material, amalgam material, other material contribute to the body BPA, contribute body's mercury liver. So, take home message. So, dental restoration are contribute to the circulating level of mercury. And depending on the number of dental cells filling, the number is important. If we have one, I have one surface amalgam. I didn't care because it, the number is matter. And those, although for average mercury as reported in the media in the US population is below the threshold set by the EPA, but the average, how personal, there are about 4 point people have more than 8 dental surveys, their body level exceeding that standard. What does that mean? They have more potential, have adverse effect. And the dental feeling do not associate with the increase of urinary BPA in the U.S. population. So further study needed to do examine the health effect associated mercury level is needed. So I said when I struggled with sex, what to treatment? So what kind of material should I choose? So I work with salmon. Ling doctor tried to find a better solution because that time I don't know BPA, how much in the body, BPA in the body. And then I want to avoid no amalgam, no BPA. Is there any other solution? And right now that is 10. And look. Dr. Simon finally said, I can try using stainless crown. Clean the teeth without treatment. He cleaned carefully all the, the cavity teeth without any chemical, without anesthesia, because I concern how body anesthesia were linked to the autism or any kind of adverse effect. And Dr. Simon did clean service installed all beautiful multiple stainless crown. And so far, Jack has without any teeth problem. So he, you know, so that's kind of, you have to, as a dentist, you need to discuss with your patients and find the best solution. We have a lot of other options and this is the best solution without any potential, you know, chemical exposure, without any potential, you know. So that's, and thank you so much for, you know, listening, and it's a long talk. <laughs>